I'm Laura Gamash. Um, my name's not intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Odd, isn't it, to have emerged from that dark Eden to rise and ebb, no matter how we cordon off and bargain? It's summer, with the heat high, gray sky, trees shaking leaves at every passing car. How far we have driven past our welcome. We say, never again, and then repeat. Coyote lulls and arbor shade, and we are filled with anxiety and sad, seedless watermelon. <clears throat> so I'm going to do a geographical shift to Northeast Oregon, the Wallawas. Uh, there's a group called Fish Trap who has a summer word fest there. And last year the theme was Migration and Passage. And here's, here's my poem, Migration and Passage. I walk into the river's voices that wrestle me towards and towards white noise concocted from snowfall, precipitous drop, and summer. Pine chipmunk scurries past the road washout sign. A boy tests a stone the size of a rye loaf as I would a melon. Heaves it. His plunk joins the flow that falls and veers, topples, stumbles, churns, murmurs, eddies, whitens, rolls, gurgles, plows, dives, moves, each chipmunk, boy, chirping bird. This is the last one, a little longer, and it's got a little bit of a, <clears throat> I gotta give you an intro, intro you're gonna know why the heck I did this. Um, which would be fun, I suppose, huh? <laughs> um, Cape Cod, P-Town, and this is the bay, and this is the ocean. This is Wellfleet, and just south of there is um, the Wellfleet Bay Wildlife Sanctuary, where this takes place. It also involves some other geography. Um, my my sister-in-law Sue and her husband Roy are volunteers for the Clearwater Festival every year, and um, which is Pete Seeger's the name of his boat he has, and he's heading up the Hudson. And so this festival happens every summer, and they run the part of the festival uh, where all the activist groups hang out. And so nobody likes to go in there. It's a little you know scary. So they got an artist this year to put a sculpture at the beginning to kind of draw people in. And it was a giant glass, or glass, um, ice sculpture of a peace sign that dripped into a large pool with the words, the inevitability of peace, spelled out in rocks. So this is how I got those two things together. The inevitability of peace at Wellfleet Bay Wildlife Sanctuary. And it's from, for Sue and Roy, who have a place near this and invited us to join them. They also do the, the work at the, at the Clearwater Festival. Now totally garbled it. Pines and locust trees practice Tai Chi. Lavender antennae splay, buds promising scent. The inevitability of peace bears a turkey feather away from Goose Pond where painted turtles pig pile a log. Bullfrogs squat, tucked into muck below the walkway, bored with us. The pond is bubble-popped proof. Dark fish stir air into the murk so they can breathe. Yellow water lily stands on thick stalk above saucer leaves dealt across the pond's table. Wearing a worn bird watcher's hat, the inevitability of peace bids us look up and tell him what we see. The bay beyond is watercolor wash on wash, swatch of blue, purple, brown. Fiddler crabs swarm tide pools, each cradling its one swollen claw. We squint west to mainland, north to Wellfleet Bay, feet in spongy marsh grass. Barrier beach or bar, sand defines and redefines where we are. As we step onto boardwalk slats set wide, 
We sidle before the grizzled inevitability of peace, resting quietly on a donated bench. What forces conspired to carry us here where low tide has set out displays? Muscle shells, sea rack, horseshoe crab helmets nestled in beach hay, osprey, tiny snails strewn artfully across this zen garden made by moon and seawater earlier today. The inevitability of peace collects cumulus, glassy light, wave luff, and salt-drenched air. Thank you.